Welcome to Beside the Burn for Monday the 24th of October and we're back to the book of Revelation this week. And the plan is that on Sunday coming, which is our communion Sunday, we're going to delve back into Revelation. Again, we're going to jump ahead a little bit. We're going to jump ahead to chapter 19 because if we're looking for some sort of relevance in the book of Revelation about our communion and about meeting around the Lord's table then that leads us to chapter 19 where we encounter the marriage feast of the Lamb and that is a a great feast that will take place in heaven and whenever we get there we will join at that feast uh, prepared as a beautiful bride uh, for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. And this week then is in preparation for us as we meet around the table on Sunday. And we usually think of the preparation leading us to communion and communion being the main event. And obviously that should be the case. But what we're going to discover is that as we prepare for communion, Communion then prepares us for the next stage, which is the marriage feast of the Lamb. So all this week and then on Sunday and then into next week, we're going to be preparing for this marriage feast of the Lamb and thinking about it. Now, as we encounter the marriage feast of the Lamb, we're going to start this week in chapters 17 and 18, which give us a little bit of introduction into what is going to happen at the marriage feast of the Lamb and also describes why this marriage feast is so important. And as ever, the book of Revelation uses incredibly graphic language to help explain the seriousness of what is about to happen. Chapters 17 and 18 are all about uh, the prostitute and the beast. And it's not the sort of language that we want to use in polite conversation. And yet it gets across to us how serious God treats sin and how seriously he views it. And we're going to find out that in chapter 17 and 18 that we can be seduced by the world that we live in. We can be seduced by the things of this world. And it's as though there is a a great prostitute there that is trying to seduce us and take us away from uh, this beautiful, pure marriage feast. And we have to realise this world for what it is and we have to turn our backs on the things of this world and we have to commit ourselves to Jesus Christ and this marriage feast. So what's going to happen? Well, in summary, this week in chapter 17 and 18, there's going to be a lot of language in Revelation that we find difficult to understand. There's going to be mountains, there's going to be heads, there's going to be jewels, there's going to be all sorts of things that are mentioned. And again, if you want to, you can go into that in great detail. You can buy commentaries and read up what people think these various things are. But as we've been doing in this series in Revelation, I simply want to give you an overview so that you can read through it and understand where we're going and see what's happening. So we're going to start in chapter 17 and 18 with the seduction that this world has in us, drawing us away from God, drawing us to the things of this world and the sinful pleasures of this world and trying to keep us away from God. Then we're going to see the breakup in that relationship that whenever we come to our senses, we turn our back on the things of this world and we turn towards Jesus Christ. Then we get ready as the bride of Christ, the church being brought together, ready then to go to this marriage feast of the Lamb uh, that will come Uh, when Jesus returns. So that's the pattern that we're going to follow. Today we're going to read verses 1 to 8 of chapter 17 uh, and that gives us a a little introduction. So let's read together uh, and see what God is saying to us. And this is entitled in the NIV, Babylon the prostitute of the beast, on the beast. 
And immediately we encounter uh, the name of this place, Babylon, and that takes us back to the Old Testament, takes us back to the Tower of Babel, whenever the people of Babel decided that they were going to build a tower and try and reach up to heaven and become more important than God, and God mixed up their languages so that they couldn't work together. It also leads us forward uh, A little while ago we were in the book of Daniel and it was Babylon that came into Israel and took uh, captive the people of Israel and took them away. And Daniel lived basically all his life in Babylon uh, there in exile, serving God and following God in the midst of uh, this evil city. And here in Revelation we're told that Babylon is this world. And all the the sin of Babylon is the sin of this world. But the interesting thing that we're going to find out here is that Babylon looks attractive to so many people. Babylon manages to seduce so many people. And the things that if we are looking to Jesus that we would find abhorrent and that God finds abhorrent and sinful are the very things that attract people to Babylon. So let's read together. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits by many waters. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. So right off, we're being told that uh, this great prostitute is going to be punished. But we also see the power of this prostitute of Babylon that has managed to seduce uh, the kings of the earth and has also intoxicated the inhabitants of the earth. She seems so attractive. She draws people to her sinfulness and makes what should be abhorrent seem attractive. Verse 3. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand, filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. We're taken here into the wilderness and we see the woman. And whenever we look at this in the cold light of day, we see how grotesque. Babylon actually is that the blasphemous names that are there the seven heads and ten horns but also we can see how Babylon seduces people she's dressed beautifully in purple and scarlet there's gold and precious stones and pearls she looks so attractive she is the real deal if this is what you are after wealth and Um, fame then Babylon is able to offer it to you there's nothing fake about this this is this is real gold real precious stones real pearls but she has this cup in her hand and the cup is full of the most grotesque things and she is drinking from this cup and we wonder to ourselves How can anybody find her attractive and yet that is how she seduces? Looking at the cold light of day, it looks the most horrible sight that we can ever imagine. And yet so often we're tempted and we're taken away and we give in to the seductions of Babylon. The name, verse 5, written on her forehead was a mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of God's holy people, the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. When I saw her, I was greatly astonished. So this cup that she is drinking from actually contains the blood 
of those who have stood up against her over the years. Those who have called her out for being uh, fake and for being against God. She has destroyed those people. She has taken their blood and she thrives on taking God's people away and on trying to destroy them. And notice John's reaction here as he sees this all before her. He is greatly astonished. Some of the other translations say that he is um, amazed at her or he marvels at her with astonishment. And it's almost as if John is being sucked in by who this woman is and and what she's portraying to the world. And, And there's a moment where he's quite amazed at what he sees. He's astonished. He's not repulsed. But he's almost drawn towards her. Then the angel said to me, why are you astonished? Why are you even taking the time to to marvel at this woman? Can you not see how evil she is? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast she rides, which has the seven heads and ten horns. The beast which you saw once was, now is not, and yet will come up out of the abyss and go to its destruction. The inhabitants of the earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the creation of the world will be astonished when they see the beast, because it once was, now is not, and yet will come. The angel explains to John, look, this is grotesque. This is sinful. This is an abomination to God. Why would you be astonished? Why would you marvel? Why would you even entertain this evil when there is a holy, perfect God? And yet, we don't have to look far in the world today to see the seduction that has taken place, to see how many have been led astray, even those that we had high hopes for who have um, given the outward appearance of trusting in Jesus Christ, often later in life have been seduced away. And we've seen a great falling away in these days. And this is what's warned here in Revelation. So let's pause for a moment today. We'll come back tomorrow and read the next part. But let's pause and let's ask that God would protect us and and help us to see this world for what it is. The world tries to make these evil things look entertaining and look harmless. And Christians are accused of being prudish, of, of taking things too seriously whenever they complain. And yet here we see the reality. So let's pray together. Lord God, we are coming to your table this coming weekend. And we pray that you might help us prepare to meet around that table. And that you would speak to us, Lord, and open our eyes, we pray. Open our eyes this week, Lord, that we might see clearly the ways that we have been seduced by Babylon. That we would clearly see the sinfulness that would keep us apart from you. And Lord, as you expose that sin to us, help us not, Lord, to marvel and be amazed at that sin, but help us to be repulsed, Lord, that we would turn away from the things of this world, that we would turn away from the seduction of Babylon, and that we would come to you, the holy, perfect God, and meet around your table. So, Lord, be with us this week, we pray, and help us as we prepare, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.